Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. We just learned about some more Marvel movies that they've canceled as part of their larger cleanup of the stuff they've been putting out the past couple of years and their big pivot to what they consider to be much stronger bets financially in terms of their characters. So we'll break it all down because it all is leading up to this soft reboot that Marvel is doing on the MCU just in general. Like we're all heading towards Secret Wars where Kevin Feige has been intending on cleaning up any of the lasting messes metaphorically and literally behind the scenes as they head forward into Marvel Phase 7. I smell what you're stepping in, Sensei. Your little cinematic universe is about to change forever. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Of course, I will do videos for whatever they do wind up releasing. Even though some stuff has been getting canceled, they're still releasing some things, including new X-Men episodes starting next week. I'll be doing videos for all those. Talk about your safe bets. X-Men definitely considered to be one of their safe bets. Like there is a live action X-Men movie that they will be releasing in the next couple of years. But the newest canceled movies that we just learned about start with Captain Marvel 3. As is usually the case with their franchises, their different teams in the past, everybody typically gets their own trilogy of solo movies. Like they go into like a brand new character expecting that they'll give them a trilogy. Sometimes in cases with like Thor, their biggest characters, they started to go past that with fourth and fifth sequel movies because they are supposed to be making Thor 5 now. It sounds like Captain Marvel 3 was in the works up to like the first couple weeks the Marvel's movie came out in theaters. And even though a lot of people try to put the blame for Marvel's big pivot in terms of their movies, their shows on the Marvel's movie tanking, all the blame does not go on them. It was just the latest in a string of poorly received movies and TV shows that they've been releasing. Like it was the final shoe dropping, sort of like the end of Marvel's overconfidence era. Essentially, it was sort of like the end of this time after Avengers Endgame where Marvel was at their peak overconfidence level, thinking that they could release anything and audiences would just come to see no matter what it was that they were putting out, which is obviously not the case. Nope, that didn't help things. Now they're pivoting back towards safer bets. Originally, Captain Marvel was going to get her own trilogy. Her name would have been in the title of each of the movies like they typically do with all their characters. Really good example of that is Thor Ragnarok. It was a crossover movie with Hulk, like it was a cross between Planet Hulk and a Thor movie, but they still led with Thor in the title. The current theory with the Marvels movie is that at some point during production, Marvel became worried about how it would do. So instead of leading with Captain Marvel in the title, like calling it Captain Marvel, slash secret invasion which is probably the story they should have gone with in captain marvel 2 like just do secret invasion as a big two-hour avengers movie instead of what we got from the secret invasion series so that they could actually pay to have all the avengers actors come back and you could do scroll versions of them there was even a very in joke about that during the secret invasion episodes where nick fury was talking to scroll Rhodey. now we know he was a scroll about why they couldn't call the avengers to help out maybe we should call our friends no, 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 no. We can't jump the gun on that. You know, we get them in a fight with the scrolls, and next thing you know, they find themselves duplicated. They came up with their own logic within the course of the episodes, but the real reason is that they didn't want to pay the money that it would require to get the actors to come back. Like it would have doubled the cost of the episodes, which is why you do it as a movie so you can recoup those costs. So, because when they went into production of the Marvels movie, because they were in the middle of their peak overconfidence era, like we could do whatever we want to do, like we could be as wacky as we want and people would just come out and see it no matter what. They swerve on making Captain Marvel 2 a secret invasion story and make it more of a wacky team up. Calling it the Marvels was meant to be a reference to the fact that all the main characters at one time went by the name in the comics with Marvel in the title, like Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, Monica Rambeau was also the original female to be called Captain Marvel in the comics. There were some deleted scenes in the movie where they settle on Photon for her name in the MCU, so essentially she's going to be Photon, but that's also from the comics, like she's gone by many names in the comics. And it sounds like where they were finishing production of that, like long before it came out, they were planning on doing a third movie that would have been a direct sequel to the events of the Marvel's movie as we saw it in theaters. With all those three main characters coming back, like Monica Rambeau coming back as Photon, Miss Marvel coming back. And it would have followed up on Monica Rambeau trying to get back to the main MCU universe from the X-Men universe where she got stuck during the post credit scene. And because of that, they would have had to have released that third movie before Avengers Secret Wars, like before the final incursions happened, before Doctor Strange 3, just because, at least right now, Doctor Strange 3 is supposed to be the very final Marvel movie before Secret Wars. I think they're going to be adapting a version of Time Runs Out for that storyline. If you haven't read Time Runs Out, that's basically like the lead up to Secret Wars where the final incursions start happening. 
Doctor Strange and Doctor Doom are critical to the actual plot of Secret Wars beginning. That kind of implies that Captain Marvel 3 would have had to have been more of a multiverse movie with more incursions happening. They stopped an incursion at the end of the Marvels movie. That was what that tear to the X-Men universe was all about. Had Monica Rambeau not closed it, the tear would have grown bigger across the entire MCU universe, and both universes would have started to collide, destroying one or both of them. There was a lot of hand waving going on in that movie, so it wasn't totally clear what was going on, like what the threat was with that tear. Now that Marvel has canceled their plans for a Captain Marvel 3, like a follow-up to the Marvel's movie, they're still going to bring all those characters back, just not in their own movie. You'll see them appear in other characters' movies, bigger characters' movies. They'll be focusing on what they consider their safest, strongest financial bets. Like the Ultimates, for example, will be a safer bet just in terms of teams. A lot of people are also wondering why they didn't do the Blue Marvel during the Marvel's movie. Now, I'm actually kind of glad, just given the way the Marvel's movie went down, how wacky it was, I am kind of glad they didn't try to introduce Blue Marvel during that because he's a much more serious character. Like, tonally, he would not have worked in that movie. A lot of people actually think because Fantastic Four is going to be taking place back in the 1960s, they might try to do a version of Blue Marvel back during that period just because of his origin story. So like I said, if we were at peak Marvel overconfidence level right after Avengers Endgame, right now, like cut to now, we're back where they were at the start of Marvel Phase 1 where they had zero confidence and they released the first Iron Man movie. It was like a make or break kind of moment for them at that time. They talk about it a lot now in retrospect because it's amazing the way things went down and how well it went. Originally, had Iron Man 1 not done well at the box office, it would have completely destroyed Marvel Studios before they had a chance to grow into what you see today, and they would have lost all their other characters as well too, like they would have had to sell those off to pay their debts. We would have never gotten that first Avengers movie, like Marvel Studios itself just would not exist the way you know them today. So that's why all of Marvel's picks in terms of movies they did, characters in Phase 1, were all meant to be titles that they considered to be their safest bets. Like, people will love this, even if they just think it's okay. Expect more of that kind of energy for the next several years. Like, Marvel generally playing it safe. I know a lot of people are kind of bummed about this. Like, we wouldn't have gotten Guardians of the Galaxy if they weren't trying wacky things. Talking Tree, Talking Raccoon. Remember, it took them several years of financial success, like banger after banger, before they felt confident enough to try something that weird. It'll probably be the same thing the next several years. Like, eventually, in success, like if things go well the next several years, you'll start seeing them try weirder and weirder things. It's all part of this financial circle of life. Like, you start out at the bottom, you work your way up to the top, then you fall to the bottom again, you have to work your way back up again. And here's the next big surprise. The next confirmed canceled movie is Ant-Man 4. If you can believe it, I almost didn't believe that they had ever even planned on making a fourth Ant-Man movie in the first place. Like, what? Why would they make another one? It made a little bit of money at the box office, but it just sounds like people were not happy with the way that went down. So they're just pivoting. They're not going to bother to try and do a fourth movie. Before it came out and they were super confident that it would do well, obviously it did not, I'm guessing that they just assumed that had it made the money they wanted it to make, they would have just continued making them. Like, oh, it's making money, we'll just keep doing it. It sounds like it would have had to come out before Secret Wars and followed up on the Council of Kangs post credit scene with Ant-Man, the others learning about the other Kangs, and involve more of the quantum realm, time travel, using it as a way to fight off the more powerful Kang variants. But they didn't say who the main villain would have been because it probably would not have been just another Kang variant because they had just done that. There are only a couple really big comic book villains out there that they could have done that would have fit in an Ant-Man movie like Annihilus, another cosmic level villain. They already did MODOK, they did Kang the Conqueror, so there aren't that many villains that are more powerful than that. So you can kind of see the problems that they start running into. There aren't that many villains that are big enough to justify a fourth movie and people that they could use that wouldn't trample on any of the villains they plan on using in Avengers 5 or like their Secret War storyline. Like you don't want to burn your really big characters on small movies when they could be used for much, much bigger things. So honestly, I'm kind of glad that this isn't getting made. Like I don't need a fourth Ant-Man movie. Paul Rudd is fantastic as Ant-Man. They can just bring him back in Avengers 5, any other future Avengers movies beyond that, assuming that he survives. I still think he should not have won at the end of Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania, like King the Conqueror should have defeated them. That's how you begin the lead up to Avengers 5. 
Originally, Cassie Lang was supposed to go to the Young Avengers movie next, if that does wind up getting made. We'll see. Depends on how strong they think that's going to wind up being. It could get canceled. They could just roll the plot, those characters, into the Scarlet Witch movie they're doing based on the Children's Crusade with Young Avengers characters. But that's not happening until, like, after Secret Wars. The next confirmed canceled Marvel movie is Eternals 2. I talked about this a little while ago because I was pretty sure it was going to be one of the movies that had been rumored to hit the trash bin. And what will probably happen with them now, like anything that would have happened in Eternals 2, is they'll just move that plot, those characters, to other movies and Disney Plus shows, like the Celestials, for example. Really cool, really weird mythology, super powerful cosmic beings. There's still all kinds of weird mythology that they tease at the end of that movie, like you have Pip the Troll, you have Harry Styles as a version of Star Fox, Thanos' brother. So there was just a lot of questions and hanging plot threads that they could have addressed in Eternals 2 that now they'll just deal with in other stories. Josh Brolin was even talking about coming back as a version of Thanos. Like, he said that he'd been hearing that Marvel wanted to bring him back in new movies as versions of Thanos. He didn't say which version, like if it'd be younger version or it'd be older version. There's just a lot of untold story for his character that they can use in future movies that they would have done in Eternals too. If we hear about any other movies getting canceled or TV shows getting canceled, of course I will do new videos about it, but it's all part of Marvel's big house cleaning. Remember, this is all leading up to their big soft reboot and they're starting that in Deadpool and Wolverine. Like there's a reason in the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer that he talks about quote unquote changing the MCU. Like it's the beginning of them sort of cleaning up the MCU. Deadpool gonna fix the MCU by slowly destroying it. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks. We have X-Men episodes starting next week. Big reminder, enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of those. Of course, I will be doing videos for all of them. Click here for all my Deadpool and Wolverine videos. And click here to learn about them bringing a version of Iron Fist back during Shang-Chi 2. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.